By the end of this first chapter of this tutorial course, we'll have made this gateway prop seen on the screen right now. By the end of the entire course, if you get past all chapters, you'll have a room filled with multiple portals that have blueprints to teleport the player wherever you wish. Continue watching this video and you will learn how to use subdivision modifiers for blocking out shapes in Blender, common use of mirror and solidify modifiers, good practices for creating well-defined shapes. Let's get started. I'm thinking we could make the gateway the entrance in which the VFX and the plane for the vortex sits in. To be fair, like the main thing about this entire series is about the VFX and the blueprints, the functionality um, of how we get this entire like teleport to work the way it does like by you going through the door and everything like this. But I know that some of you that are watching will probably really like the actual geometry, like the door, the gateway itself. And I know that you might want to create something similar of your own. Uh, so I decided uh, that I will showcase that in a very quick modeling exercise. We'll see how quick, hopefully quick indeed. I've made this door um, in three pieces, well two actually. The main one is the frame, it includes the gray and the gold elements. And then the secondary part is inside of there, there is actually a plane that sits um, and gives the vortex. This shape that you see at the door is very similar to this. I've purposely went for similar visual language. It's also what I had in my reference art by my friend Oli. But Please bear in mind that in this first part of this tutorial series, we will create the geometry, but it will be mostly a block outfit. It will not be optimized and will not get into creating textures for this. If you were to go after making your own textures for it and you wanted to know exactly how I made mine, I would recommend going to some of my dev logs that I, previous videos that I've done on the topic of making this. I shall link them in the video description or put them here on the screen right now. So with that all out of the way, we start in Blender. We obviously delete the default cube. We don't need any of that. And the first thing that I want you to bear in mind is that the forward vector in Unreal is X plus, that's for the characters. So with us creating the different pieces of the geometry, you don't need to create what I'm making just now, I'm just going to showcase something. We want to have in mind that, imagine this is an arrow, right? Well, that's kind of a ugly arrow, but whatever it serves its purpose. Whatever we create, it needs to be facing towards the X plus. You can see it up there, okay? Keep that in mind because the functionality of the blueprints and the different pieces that we create later on and how the character goes through the gateway and how the character, the player, finds themselves at the other side of a portal will be dependent on where the gateways are looking at, which their forward direction is. So we want it to be X plus, okay? With that kind of out of the way, I'll show you these very basic few moves that I use in order to create and quickly sketch out uh, different pieces. Before we start with that, I want to show you another cool trick. Uh, by the way, make sure that you have created a third person template, Blueprints 1. And when you do that, it will give you a scene in which you have this character, right? Okay. And what you can next do is navigate to the third person folder of this new Unreal project that you've created, go into blueprints, and there you find this third person character, right? Um, if you go inside of the blueprint for it, you can then go to the viewport and then select the mesh of the character and then click this SKM Queen symbol in the details panel, okay? Click the uh, find in folder. And here, hover over the character, right click and say asset actions, 
and then export. Okay, not migrate, migrate, export. Click export and then somewhere on your desktop, say for some FBX. I already did that a minute ago, but it doesn't matter. The FBX um, compatibility ends, it doesn't really matter. Just click export, it will work. Now go back into Blender, F3 or however you bring your import and then import FBX and then navigate to importing the character that we just did. Okay, so there's a mismatch between the different axes in Unreal by default and the ones in Blender. We're not gonna change them because we don't want to complicate this tutorial. Just remember what I said, the X needs to be a forward vector and right now our character they are actually looking in the wrong direction so expand these roots until you find skm queen simple um, as a name and then rotate the character 90 degrees and then pro tip you can click on the eye on the root in order to remove all of them bones because we will not be using the bones but anyway what we accomplished here now you can select it all and then just move the character to the side. What we accomplished here, let's move them three meters uh, to one side, doesn't matter whichever side you like. What we accomplished here is we have a scene with a dummy that will be useful for being able to tell how large our gateway should be. The size of that door depends on context and the context is human size and the human size is our character. So whenever you make different modeling art, um, tasks always use a dummy. Okay, we can now start modeling. So I'm going to start with a cube and this cube is two by two meters and by the way this gateway that we're making it's gonna be rather large. We like it that way because it can give us space for putting the vertex in there and even better it gives us space for the player capsule, the collision of the player, to be able to navigate through the door without any issues. But I will start by defining my side way, like wings, like, let me actually open. So I'll start defining like this shape here, the, the one that you see right in the middle. And my approach will be, I'll make the left side and then I'll just mirror it on to the right side. But that way we do half of the work necessary, which is cool. My approach to this will be to use subdivision. So I'm going to duplicate this cube and put it on the side and then kind of like make it small like this. And now in the mo in the modifier tabs, click on uh, this wrench kind of icon under the orange, under objects, click add modifier and then search for subdivision surface. Okay. Um, press on that. And you can see that our cube immediately kind of turned into an orb. Well, not really, but you get what I'm saying. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of what subdivision is and how its algorithm works and stuff like that, because I'm assuming that you in parts maybe know some of this stuff, but also we don't want to make this series to be like way too long. So I'll mention tips here and there and explain some basics, but not too much. Anyway, so the way the subdivision works is whenever we have kind of like a support loop like that, I just extruded there, it makes the shape be a bit harder in surface. Auto edit mode and I right click and shade out smooth. Um, and then I will increase the angle to 60 degrees, like so. And from here, we kind of like start uh, making all our shapes. So I'll move to this side and then I'm just going to move the existing face then let's insert an edge loop in the middle there and then let's move that up like insanely up and you can already see that we're kind of like starting to get the shapes let me actually import the existing gateway so we can be using it as a as a reference. I know that you won't have this, but if you kind of like use the cube, which both you and I will have a two meters cube in our scene and this uh, character, um, hopefully you'll be able to derive like similar measurements and create a door of your own similar to this. By the way, your door doesn't need to be identical. Have fun and make it in whichever way you like. Anyway, let me think about this for a second. We want to create this like really smooth and nice curve. But first I'm thinking let's 
block out extrude upwards by 0.7. You can see it on the lower left side of the screen. And then scale and by pressing S and then Y to bind it on the Y axis. And go inwards about 0.45. And we get this. Select this loop out and then click on it. Bevel, increase a few times. And that kind of gives us the base shape. Select the lower part, move it like so. Then this one, I, I selected the entire loop there, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. And then again, and then insert a loop here. And again on the Y axis. Cool. That's very cute. And we can see we already kind of like have the thing shade out smooth, just because why not? And oops. Excuse me, let's select this and this and bevel it like so. So yeah, we kind of have the gap already. So that's first milestone accomplished. And let's select it and F2 to rename and say door gap. And then this will be our side wing A. Cool. So let's let's continue with the side wing. I guess I'll start calling it that so it's a bit easier to to understand. It's kind of cool the shapes we have there. So let's see how we can replicate them. So I go in edit mode and I select it all and on the X axis I will kind of like by four times nearly make it larger. I'll move the piece to over there. And then what I'm thinking is that I want to select this and I want to go here and I want to kind of like place it around there. Okay. Move it like so, select this, and then extrude it once and then twice. Cool. So we already are starting to get that smooth shape up there. Okay. And here, like I'm seeing that there's a face down there that looks downwards and it kind of defines the lower part. We already have it here, but can you see how it's not large enough? It doesn't nearly match. Um, what we have. So I will kind of use this face. I'll select its edge here and I'll move it on the Y axis again to go inwards until so. And then this here, I'm going to press G once and then twice and slide it upwards. Cute. And then here, I will press E to extrude and then scale inwards. And this way we're making this supporting edge loop that I mentioned um, a bit ago that really works well with our subdivision and gives us the shape that we want. Okay. And then our wing, it has this point for select that. And I already have some pre like some ideas. Okay. So I'm thinking we can loop cut here. And it doesn't matter, by the way, that it's adding that many loops because it's going to be beneficial, actually. And I'm going to move it by pressing GG, sliding it like this. And then I press this one and I slide it upwards. This one I'm going to select again and slide up. Now I select that face and that face and I extrude to the left of us. Okay, and we already can see that shape there kind of started to take effect. Uh, I select the lower part and I move it in until my normals stop breaking. And then I select this and I extrude it along its normal. To do that, I just press E and nothing else. And that already starts to give me that kind of cool shape here that we have, okay? So with that place there, I then scale on the X axis inwards, and then I scale on the Z axis a bit. Okay. I select this and I go to the side and I do that. Okay. So there's a bit of a difference already between the shape here and this here. We'll try to refine it, but I'm going to be honest with you. I might not match perfectly. If you want, you can pause the video a bit later on. But yeah, you can try to replicate them a bit better for yourself if you want. Um, I encourage you to have fun and to kind of experiment. 
and maybe give it a tiny bit of your own visual flavor and twist, because that is the fun of art after all. The next thing that I can immediately notice is that my curve there is a bit different, so I'll select this and I'll move it up. I'll select that and I'll move it up. I'm not very precise, by the way, with my movements here, because I'm just having fun. I just go on the x-axis to bind my movement to only that, and then I start kind of like refining the shape. Okay, next, I'm thinking we go to the side view, go into our x-ray, and we select all of these, and let's move them a bit to the side, like that. So select them and move them by a Similar to these numbers here, the screen that you see, and then select the upper parts and move them like so, and then go out of X ray, like these, but again in the X ray, out of X ray, and then move up. So we kind of matched it a bit better. Again, I know it might have been a bit of a struggle for you, but hopefully, you managed to see the moves that I did it relatively similar ones. And now I want to isolate this piece for a moment and select these faces really. And I have one thing in mind. It is that if these lower parts touch perfectly this ground plane that's kind of invisible where the feet of the player are, I'm worried that the piece later on when used as an art piece will not be nearly as useful and versatile if used by, let's say, other artists, environment artists that are set dressing. So I like, essentially what I'm saying is I like to give my piece a bit of space like this, where it sinks tiny bit into the ground, but that means that the piece is more versatile to be used on landscapes that fluctuate on height. So you can see the outline here, it visualizes it really well. It means that the pieces will not flow. So have that in mind for yourself as well. And yeah, pull the pieces a bit down like that. And after I pulled it down, I'm actually going to delete the faces. And when I've deleted the faces, it actually makes it end into a hard edge, which is very useful. And it just makes me be able to define the shape a bit better. Later on, by the end of the tutorial, we'll go back to apply the different subdivision modifiers. And after we apply it, like this for example, we'll select and fill these and triangulate them. This face will always be away from player camera, so there doesn't need to be any detail there, but I will want to seal them and not leave any holes like this, because if there are gaps and the mesh is not sealed, it might make issues for Nanite and in Unreal 5, and from Nanite, it might then create issues for Lumen and our global illumination as well. So even though not sealing your assets, leaving gaps here and there, might be a useful optimization technique for some other engines and for older gen games, here we don't need to go to an extreme like that. So next, what I'm going to do is I'll actually increase the levels viewport subdivision by one here. So from one, I go to two. And that immediately gives me smoother shapes because we're subdividing more types. And with that, I will now try to refine things a bit further. So I'll select the door gap and I'll hide it for a moment because that way I can actually see these edges. And with that, I can now select deep cut to make here. Then I'll select just this, this, this. I'll go back here. I'll kind of do this. You can see that when I move it like this, thanks to the subdivision, it actually makes for a curve. And that's exactly what we want. It's very useful. I can try match it to the one behind. I want to kind of keep loop edge flow that kind of makes sense. So I select the upper part and I slide it like so. Here, I'm going to cut from there to there. Oh, I'll cut from there to Hold down shift, cut here, hold down shift, cut here, hold down shift, well not shift, but like cut there, and we make this loop, and then slide down. So we're getting there, slowly, um, and yeah, we'll continue in a moment because the camera is running out of battery. 